if you just follow what I'm saying. It is not just important to understand each section of this teaching, but it is also important for you to recognize the basic thrust or the direction that this general teaching is headed. And you need to know what we've done up to this point if you are to appreciate the whole teaching. I, I get a sense that perhaps you're understanding all the small pieces of the teaching but that you're not being able to follow this entire thread the thread of the teaching and the essence of the benefit of this teaching is for you to be able to follow the thread from beginning to end if you can't pick up that thread and follow through to the end then you would have lost the benefit of the essence that stands at the heart of this teaching and this is a very important point that I don't want you to miss we are translated the first time into the eternal realm because we are continuing to resist the lost preservation instinct and not because we are in continuous submission to Christ I need to understand that because we have departed from that former knowledge since our knowledge has been increased by the person of Christ Jesus. We no longer speak of being translated because we submitted to the last declaration, but we speak of our continuing to resist the lust preservation instinct and therefore are translated by the Holy Ghost. Now what I'm saying to you is whether it's in the first instant whether the Holy Ghost is translating us for the purpose of receiving the declaration or whether the Holy Ghost is translating us for the purpose of baptism into Christ so that we can be healed by the glory of Christ Jesus in the last age of glory that whether it be a translation for the declaration or a translation for baptism it is not the Holy Ghost who determines whether or not we ought to be translated but rather it is based on Christ's own determination and the Holy Ghost only acts only translates us only begins to move based on Christ's desire and Christ's understanding of what is happening in our own lives. No determination is made by the Holy Ghost. And this is why it seems so totally absurd to Christ when they speak of baptism in the Holy Ghost or baptism with the Holy Ghost or baptism by the Holy Ghost. The function of the Holy Ghost is restricted to taking us to the side of Christ. He is the Parakletos or the Paraclete. And the condition for our being translated into the eternal realm to come before Christ is not determined at will by the Holy Ghost, but is as a result of our own response to Christ. And the struggle that is taking place within us based on Christ's own determination. It is obvious that if we are in continuous submission to Christ and if we have submitted to the last declaration that Christ would want to have the Holy Ghost translate us to his side for the sake of our baptism into him into Christ I need also to say at this point that Christ
Christ does not have to inform the Holy Ghost of this, of our positive response to the declaration, because the Holy Ghost himself is God as well. If we press on into the act of submission towards Christ after we have seen the declaration which was the first time we were translated by the Holy Ghost into the eternal realm then obviously the Holy Ghost will take us to Christ's side and if we do not pursue happy Christ if we do not press on into submission towards Christ if that act of will is not present then the Holy Ghost will not take us to the side of Christ Paul makes it extremely clear in Romans 6, 3 and 4 that we are baptized into Christ and not into the Holy Ghost and we ought to need no further proof of this In essence, the Holy Ghost makes it possible for us to approach Christ. Without Holy Ghost translation, we would not be able to be baptized into Christ Jesus. The fact that Christ exists in a state of lack also guarantees that we will be able to be assumed into Christ and therefore receive healing through our tasting the original event that took place before the physical creation of Christ re-emerging with us while we are hid in him from the place of the blood into the place of the glory the Holy Ghost makes it possible for us to approach Christ but it is Christ who assumes us into himself who buries us into himself and who hides us in himself it is Christ who baptizes us into himself and it is Christ who gives us a taste of the original experience of Christ giving us as the original spiritual creation the breath of life as he originally brought the original spiritual creation to life before the physical creation it is Christ who re-emerges with us as we are hidden in him 
in the Egypt law for our healing. It is a temporary test that we are able to receive as a free gift because Christ exists in a state of lack. We receive healing when we are baptized in Christ. We can receive healing, deliverance and salvation no other way. This is why I said that Christ kept the authority, power and ability to baptize in himself. He never gave it to the church. If we cannot baptize others in Christ in reality, then why pretend that it is right to water baptize which Christ did not call us to. To water baptize men is an attempt at usurping Christ's authority which he kept in himself. I find water baptism extremely offensive and God calls it blasphemy. It gives God a bad name because water baptism ends in people still being wicked and sinful. When we are baptized into Christ, on the other hand, at the point that we are baptized into Christ, we are without sin and beyond the reproach of men since our lust has been neutralized. Our sin in existence has been neutralized and the act of sin is non-existent since we speak scripture. Jesus makes it quite plain in Matthew 28, 19. Jesus not only speaks about authority in heaven, but he adds that he has also retained all authority in the earth. So even if he is not here and the church is here, the authority and the power and the ability to baptize still lies with Jesus Christ. The instructions that are found in Matthew 28 and 19 were given to the disciples to disciple all races but the ability to do this was only given at Pentecost so what happened at Pentecost was Christ empowering the church at that time to do what he had already instructed them to do before he ascended which was to disciple all races by teaching them and inspiring them to come before Christ and they were taught in their own native tongues by the Hebrew disciples at Pentecost at Pentecost the Holy Ghost did not empower them Christ did the extent of the influence of the Holy Ghost was limited to translating them to the eternal realm to come before Christ so that Christ himself could empower them after they had been baptized in him and we cannot say that these disciples were not influenced by the Holy Ghost before and we cannot say that Pentecost was the first time that the Hebrew disciples of Jesus were influenced by the Holy Ghost Peter had already been translated to the eternal realm several times before the easiest example is when Peter proclaimed that Jesus was the Christ by revelation Jesus said disciple all races that the church should become a worldwide church consisting of all races the church was no longer restricted to the Hebrew nation the question always is what does it mean to be a disciple and how do we disciple others to be a disciple means that we are in the fight of faith that you are resisting the lust preservation instinct continuously because you value the glory more than you value your lust that in fact like Jonah we have stopped running from God because we have seen into the eternal realm and are convinced of the value of the glory because of the experience of healing and not just a declaration we are no longer deceived by the oppressor since we recognize that there is life more valuable than lust to the disciple means that we are in the spiritual way 
and do have a relationship with God through Christ Jesus because we continue to resist the lust preservation instinct and therefore have the ability to notice the declaration. To be a disciple simply means to follow Christ in truth because we have faith since we struggle against the lust preservation instinct. We make others disciples of Christ, Jesus and God by exactly what Jesus says in Matthew 28, 19 and 20 by teaching others only what is defined for us by Christ in the declaration so that they will be inspired if they have a desire for God and are willing to surrender their lust. Inspiration acts as an introduction into the eternal realm and an introduction only and the atmosphere that Christ abides in. But those inspired must still resist the lust preservation instinct in order for them to notice the declaration which they must submit to for the experience of deliverance and healing through the glory of God. In this way others can establish a true relationship with God. The physical words cannot hypnotize you and make you do something you just are against. You will not obey Jesus if you hear the physical word. You must still resist the lust preservation instinct for anything to happen in your own life. It is not a matter of witchcraft. I can't hypnotize you by these words. You must have a desire for God and you will not continue in this church if you basically do not see the benefit of trusting in Jesus Christ. I'd like you to turn with me please to Psalm 107 and verse 17. It is a bit difficult for me to believe in this day and age after all this teaching that some still get offended at the teaching on lust and the physical condition which in its latest form has been the teaching on the lust preservation instinct. Father, I cannot believe that after coming to this church for so many years some still have this vague idea in their head that they can be forced into doing certain things when they don't have a desire to follow God. Your following Christ must be emanating from your basic desire to find Christ. I cannot hypnotize you into believing in Jesus Christ. I can't force you to resist your lust preservation instinct if basically you don't have a desire for such a thing as that. you must be persuaded in your own mind that it is to your benefit to resist your own lust preservation instinct. It is not mine. It is your own. We each have a compass of deception that functions within us and each of us must in our own innate and natural abilities begin our struggle and our walk with Jesus based on the essence of these our own abilities. If you're not willing to master everything that is within your own person for the purpose of finding Christ then you will never get to that point because Christianity is all about your own free will. Christianity is about the individual desire to find and follow Christ. The church cannot save you. The church cannot hypnotize you into developing a desire for God if on the inside of you, you have this basic instinct that is natural, that is controlling you and steering you away from God. It seems strange.
strange to me that the more information and knowledge that is revealed in this ministry the harder it is for some to come to church and the most dedicated of us appear to be perhaps breaking down in as far as our excitement and our motivation for this ministry which has nothing to do with what I'm saying and that the offense only is triggered by your own compass by your own natural instincts and the Christian struggle really only begins with a struggle in your own abilities to restrain your own instincts it's a struggle between your natural instincts and your innate abilities the abilities that are naturally found within you if you're not willing to use what you have to begin this entrance into the New Testament what I'm saying to you is that you will never reach anywhere with Christ Jesus you must have this basic desire within you for Christ and if that desire is not within you if you don't have a desire for a better way of life than the one in which you presently find yourself then there is nothing that this ministry or church can do to save you since our authority goes as far as inspiration we are here to inspire you not to hypnotize you not to make you into a better person in spite of your own resistance to the Christian struggle if you don't desire to struggle if you don't want to struggle within yourself then there's nothing that this ministry can do to deliver or save you not even water baptism which does not work and which is a false teaching that is presented by the oppressor as a means to get you out of God's way as a means to secure you in the grasp of his own hands to confirm you in your wicked nature that keeps you oppressed and separated from God because of your loss if you don't have within you a desire for God if you don't have a desire within yourself to experience God then there is nothing that this church can do to help you and it seems strange that some have not even understood the choice that we have been laying on the table for years that it's between lust and Christ because the lust preservation instinct points to that decision and that is why some of us find it so offensive and want to stay away from church because I'm bringing to the forefront of your memory the basic essence that we cannot baptize you we cannot hypnotize you into receiving an experience that you don't necessarily want there is no fear in the church there can be no fear where Christ is because where Christ is is the place of the blood for the purpose of giving us an experience that is everlasting in the place of the glory and if we can't see into that place then we will never become excited about Christ church will never be exciting because only the lust appears to be exciting as do the husks fed to pigs we can never live a life of fear and oppression once we resist the lust preservation instinct 
if we are in fear, it's because we are not resisting the lust preservation instinct. That's the beginning and the end of the teaching. Fear and oppression come because you're not willing to use what you naturally have within yourself to overcome your natural instincts. And that is the direction of Jesus Christ. These are the instructions that Jesus Christ gives us in Matthew 28, 19 and 20 that I have to teach you to resist the lost preservation instinct so that you can see the declaration have faith and be baptized into Jesus Christ because the Holy Ghost translates you into the eternal realm and you receive an indirect experience of the Father which is a shadow for the reality of Christ re-emerging in his own essence which originally took place before the physical creation after he had spiritually created us and that is what the Lord wants to share with us Easter is about this essence of our being in Jesus Christ at his resurrection resurrection that took place on Easter Sunday quote unquote is only a shadow because it cannot fully represent the essence of what it purports to represent which is our original spiritual creation being brought to life as Christ moved from the place of the blood to the place of the glory as it took place originally before the physical creation that is what Easter is Easter can never be without us being in Christ Jesus as he was Christ did not need to die he died for our sakes therefore therefore I say to you that the physical resurrection is a shadow because it cannot fully shadow and represent and show you and communicate and detail all the aspects of spiritual resurrection which took place before the physical creation but we can't experience this resurrection we can't experience this baptism for the sake of our resurrection in Jesus Christ unless we first begin to resist our own natural instincts with the natural abilities that we were given at physical birth I understand that the lust preservation instinct teaching is so offensive because it allows us to recognize that we have to use what we have in our natural selves to get what we want in Jesus Christ and the world and the world church always wants to put everything at the feet of the church the people in the world and the world church want to put the onus or the liability for our failures at the feet of the church and I as a member of the true eternal church of God can never accept that as a reality of what really is taking place at this moment it's to try and evade the truth of our physical circumstances in this life it is like trying to escape some truth that we cannot evade in the end because Jesus will confront us with it we can't escape it when we come to church and we become afraid for what is said we become afraid because we don't want to give up our natural instincts, our lust 
We don't want to defeat the compass of deception. We don't want to fight against our lost preservation instincts. And that is why you become fearful. There cannot be fear in the true eternal church of God because where the true eternal church of God is, is not here and there cannot be fear in the eternal realm. You cannot become afraid that this ministry is going to make you do something that you really don't want to do because for you to do it which is dying to self you first have to desire it you first have to want it and furthermore on top of all of that you have to resist your own lost preservation instinct for you to do what you don't want to do which is stop running away from God Jonah became fearful and that is why he ran he ran because he didn't want to do God's will and we're all called to submit not to the transmission from men but we're all called to submit to the transmission from God in Christ Jesus if your life is unfulfilling if you are full of fear if you are therefore depressed and you are therefore oppressed by Satan by Lucifer by the oppressor then know that there is something wrong in your life and that something is that you have not resisted the lost preservation instinct I'm not making an altar call I'm simply saying what the Lord Jesus Christ is showing me we cannot experience baptism unless we resist the lost preservation instinct and this baptism is not water baptism because there is only one baptism it's baptism in Christ as Paul says in Romans 6.3 as many as are baptized into Christ Jesus are baptized into the, into the death of Jesus Christ or of God and it implies it is not about water baptism it doesn't say Romans 6 3 does not say as many as are baptized into Jesus Christ are baptized into water it says are baptized into the real experience of benefiting from the death of God on the other side in the eternal realm which the way the wicked church just cannot see And once again, I'm calling on everybody who has anything to do with this ministry to repent, to turn from our wicked ways and to begin, in fact, to resist the lost preservation instinct not for my benefit, but for your own benefit. Perhaps it is good that some of us are absent this morning because we probably couldn't take this teaching without becoming totally offended which is probably what has already happened to determine the number of people in church this morning as we continue last week's teaching when the offense had already begun to be stimulated not by my words but by people's own lust preservation instinct offense comes at the word yes but it's not the word that causes the offense it's the compass of deception steering you away from God it's your own instinct for the preservation of your lust that makes you offended at the word because it does not want to be neutralized
Not everybody can listen to two hours of teaching that comes directly defined by God in the person of Christ Jesus. But if you listen to these two hour teachings all at once, you will recognize that these teachings can never be divided into two or three because each is a one unit presented to the church. These teachings cannot be divided. They were presented by Jesus Christ himself and we have to receive them for exactly what they are. And the real, therefore, we are not to take them lightly. We are to appreciate them and respect scripture for exactly what it is. Baptism is all about Jesus Christ. It's not about the Holy Ghost. And everything that has to do with baptism surrounds Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost makes it possible. How can we be so sure? We are so sure because Scripture says it. Because Jesus Christ defines it in scripture to us personally that we pass on to you and because you can be inspired by what Christ defines in this teaching on baptism why spend so much time and energy on the teaching on water baptism because it is the reason for the failure of the church today or should I say the failure of the wider church it is an integral part and parcel of the essence of the oppressor working in the wicked church that is not of Christ since these works such as water baptism are presented to the carnal mind by the oppressor for the purpose of keeping many separated from God and for as long as God permits it no longer because in the same way that I was brought up in corruption and the Lord delivered me from all of it in spite of all odds which permits us to stand to this day because we do stand up to this day against all odds there is no physical reason why we still ought to be saying that our ministry is alive there is no significant reason why we can continue to say that our church is alive apart from the fact that we are sent by Jesus Christ and for anyone to be a part of a ministry that is God's send must result in a blessing in the end because we must find him in the end you cannot exist so close to truth for long without either rejecting it outrightly or embracing it with both hands the greatest contribution of Jesus of Nazareth the son of man in as far as teaching is concerned is pertaining to the explanation of the Holy Ghost being the paraclete now we have to understand that if we are following in the example of Pascha of Jesus of Nazareth then everything that he endured we shall also today endure so if he was deserted expect that we in his footsteps 
will be deserted if Jesus and Paul were not appreciated by the world of church and Paul was not appreciated and we must proclaim this the world of church appeared to desire to present a picture of peace between the church and Paul and that did not exist in truth in Paul's lifetime Paul was always resisting and fighting against the false teachings of the church and that is why he was isolated and pushed on the side and in the end the church prevailed over John because they conspired against him to have him be removed to the Isle of Patmos so in the end even John was excluded from the church and what are we to stand as? what example are we to stand as if we don't follow the pattern of our predecessors and of Jesus Christ if you think that we can exist in a different state than that which Jesus existed in in this life then you're not seeking after God you're seeking after the physical support of numbers and of comfort in numbers that their person desires to pass on to everyone in the end Jesus' ministry was rejected and he practically stood alone separated from the majority of his own disciples because they refused to resist their own natural instincts can't be greater than that nor can it be less than it and the reason why many have chosen to deserve this ministry is for that very cause because they're not willing to resist their own lust preservation instinct and therefore remain wicked to this day and will have to answer for it to God because the ones were placed in a church that is chosen by God to speak his word and it exists in its highest form up to this time as it exists in expression of reality that can always only be short of God's glory we can now fully express the reality of what exists on the other side and if it be in words it will always be short of the reality so even though our words are more expressive than what exists before it still is not the reality and we have to accept all scripture as falling short of the reality that abides in the eternal realm and that's the basic essence of what I'm saying anything that takes place in this physical world whether it be in word or deed whether it be teaching or water baptism whether it be eating the last supper or water baptism again it can only exist in a state that does not fully represent the reality that continues to abide in the eternal realm that God is seeking to represent by words and deeds that are physical look how easy it is to understand once, once it's in this world once it is of physical words then no that it is not the essence of the reality that God seeks to communicate to others if it is an act 
that uses physical elements like water, wine, and bread, know that these elements can never fully communicate the essence that God desires to communicate to us which can only be experienced in a true way through baptism in Jesus Christ so when we speak of as Matthew did in Matthew 20, 19 and 20 when we speak of baptism in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Ghost we understand that the term is used loosely and I cannot overestimate the impact of that teaching on the church and I cannot overemphasize this fact of where it says baptism in the nature of Father, Son and Holy Ghost that we take it to be baptism in a loose sense broadly, generally and not specifically as in baptism in the name of Jesus only which is why Luke states it in Acts so that we could represent and communicate the essence of the reality by speaking of baptism into Christ Jesus with the help of the Holy Ghost since we cannot attain the level of existence of Christ without the Holy Ghost. And it's not determined by the Holy Ghost. Who gets translated is not determined at will by the Holy Ghost. Everything is determined by Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, as he abides in the eternal realm, does not have to communicate everything to the Holy Ghost, since the Holy Ghost is also God. He knows all things. But our response that counts in the mind of the Holy Ghost, quote unquote, the mind of the Holy Ghost, has to do with our response to Christ Jesus and our response to the basic Christian doctrine that says to begin a walk with Jesus we have to resist our own natural lust preservation instinct without that we'll attain nothing I understand that the term disciple all nations disciple all races in reality is offensive because detailed in it is the reality of our struggle against our lost preservation instinct I understand that and the fool remains a fool while they do not resist their lost preservation instinct a fool remains in lack of knowledge because he does not resist his own lost preservation instinct and remains in revolt and in a state of constant breaking away from just authority which is Christ so if you're oppressed and if you're depressed exist in fear know that it's because you're a fool existing in a state that is separated from knowledge in an unexpanded mind or in your own carnal mind because of your own rebellion because of your own rejection of what you know to be true in as far as what scripture says pertaining to your own struggle this is the essence of what Psalm 
107.17 says Fools because of their pasha or revolt or rebellion and the Hebrew word pasha is from pasha which means to break away from just authority following Adam's example so fools because of their rebellion against God against scripture as was the case with Adam and because of their perversities their existence in the physical condition in lust are afflicted are depressed are oppressed you remain oppressed because of your state of rebellion to God you remain a fool because of this state of your constantly being in a state of breaking away constantly from God's own just authority in the person of Christ Jesus in whom lies all authority in heaven and on earth which includes the authority to baptize all sons into Jesus Christ by Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ as he continues to abide in the eternal realm if you are in a state of fear then know that it is because you are a fool because you are ignorant perversity the word used in Psalm 107 17 perversity speaks of the physical condition or your flesh and your lust and the lack of knowledge existing in a carnal mind so when you are in your perversity know that you are a fool and that's the reason why you are oppressed that's the relationship that is presented to us in Psalm 107.17 there is a relationship between our ignorance our rebellion and our oppression and you can't escape it you can't get away from it no matter where you turn scripture always brings the onus back to your own feet at your own lap in your own hands your perversity is your own fault the reason you're existing in lack in lust and in the carnal mind in ignorance in lack of knowledge as a fool because you refuse to submit to the authority of God in Jesus Christ and his will is generally known as scripture is sent from the eternal realm to us through instruments that teach in the church and it doesn't matter how many are in church physically because we are the eternal church with access with access being in union with the eternal church in the eternal realm you can't separate us from it so we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses yet you come into church depressed you come in and there are not many in church and you you're feeling depressed you're feeling oppressed that has nothing to do with the state of the church but with your own carnality with your own lack of excitement because of your blindness because you can't see that if two of us are in church it's enough 
to work in heaven in as far as our own souls is concerned in as far as our own minds are concerned that the glory can be awakened in us when we come to church that we can exist in a state of healing because we desire God we either have the glory of God or we die if it comes to that choice then you know you have arrived at what it means to resist against the lust preservation instinct if you come to church and you say I must have the glory or surely I will die which state is already a reality in your own life outside of baptism in Jesus Christ then you know you have arrived that you are struggling against the lust preservation instinct a struggle which must continue on to the end and we don't come in fear we don't come into church being fearful of who is here or why the others haven't come because you know the reason they're not here they don't want to resist the lust preservation instinct and therefore let those of us who are willing to experience the glory press on in Jesus Christ never looking back never wanting to become something that God did not determine for us beforehand why not accept it and embrace it we have nothing to lose and we have all to gain because surely this life fleeth quickly is as sand that passes through the hand as you stand on the beach looking at the horizon let us not one day be awakened to an eternity of torment because you were afraid to identify with a ministry that was isolated and rejected by all let us not be afraid